Welcome to Talking In Stations. This is Matterall and it is May 10th. Today we're going to talk about what kind of fittings you should use for the event that's going on so you can get your skins. But before we do all that, we're going to talk among ourselves here about the news. Let's have some introductions first. Uh, our, our guest and expert today is going to be Hateless. How are you doing, Hateless? Hello, how's it going? Good to see you. Uh, we also have Rundle with us, of course. Hey, everyone. Good evening. Can't raise his hand because he's animated. <laughs> animated hand in the background. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> right. We also have Adrenal. Uh, adrenal. Adreland? Adreland? I'm going to let you say it. Okay, we're going to conjugate. Adreland Deninard. Adreland Deninard. Hi. I think I got it. Okay, and we also have Maddox R with us today. How are you doing, Maddox? Good, fine. Good All right. Uh, off camera is uh, Gregorian there. How are you doing? I think I'm doing all right. Oh, you sound a little quiet. I think you might need to... Can you say that again? Good evening. I'm doing all right. Yep, I'm going to turn you up. Okay. Well, uh, all right, guys. So what's going on out there in the news that is... Uh, the big deal today yeah probably the biggest story of the weekend was the anger games tournament uh in which templus calstiff got first place warlords of the deep got second place and a combined imperium team with members of goon swarm initiative and the bastion got third place oh congratulations to those yeah, they, three groups they don't usually do well in tournaments but uh, the anger game is sponsored by them so uh, it's good. They home team, I guess. And <clears throat> Templus Calcif and Warlords of the Deep were the first and second place of the last major tournament, the Alliance Open a few months ago. Right. Yeah, we interviewed him after that win. Yeah. Uh, the last Spartan uh, Templus Calcif's team captain is a very good FC at both the small gang tournament size level and uh, larger stuff. And, and he's a, a good, always a good person to have for interviews. Uh, I think he's being facetious when he says that because kind of one word answers. The man is a, a man of very few words, a lot of action. So it's hard to get, it's hard to get more than, uh, huh. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think so, out of him. So, difficult interview, very difficult. But you guys aren't, you guys are super chatty, right? That's what I thought. I, I can relate. Sometimes I'm not as chatty, but... Yeah, what else was out there in the news today? Yes. Okay, you're a little behind, Randall. <laughs> you might want we to had, catch up. Um... I'm trying to be chatty. Yes. <laughs> System was LTAC, uh, 1HKR. Ooh, let's um, go there. Had Volta, toilet paper, and Triumvirate. Hopefully I pronounced that right. Oh, give me that Flashed system. With, sorry, give me that system sorry. one more time. Give me that system. Oh, sorry. LTAC, 1HKR. I'm going to go there on our map, see if we can do this. Well, we'll set destination so that we can actually see it, but then we'll show it on the map as well. So there we are. So I'm in GETA, so you can kind of get an idea of like how far it is. Volt is back up north, it looks like. Maybe we're after campaigning in the south. Oh, carry on now. Uh, go ahead and tell us what you were going to say. So those groups basically fought with um, some winter co-groups, fraternity, uh, literally triggered uh, Nulla Seknaya, Shalupin, and Lord of Worlds Alliance. Um, it was a pretty even fight. Both sides had about 150 ships. Um, Volta's group had nightmares. Uh, Winter Co. brought uh, Tempest fleet issues. Um, both sides lost. Uh, Volta was 7 billion ISK, and Winter Co. was like 9 billion. Yeah, that nine point seven five billion on the Winter Co side. Uh, NSH uh, formed up their own 
rattlesnake fleet separately from the core winter co group say in a tempest fleet issue fleet yeah volta showed up with some pretty good numbers for for volta right yeah 150 pilots is pretty good yeah nice to see all those uh new faction battleships getting uh blown up so that uh, people who invested that with invested in those with the uh the new changes coming are, are probably rubbing their fists together, waiting to count the isk. That's a lot. That is a lot of ships gone. I thought the changes were already in place. No, oh, well, they are. For the tech um, one stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Tech one, but not I mean, the... they're here. I shouldn't say coming. They're here. But they're yeah, coming the to the next but... ships that get built to replace these ones, is what I'm trying to say next. Basically, yeah. people were uh, getting as many as they could before the changes went through. Yeah. These are probably stockpiled ships. You know, they probably didn't recently build them in the last week or so. So now you got to replace them. All right. Well, once again, that was in the north near uh, MTAC. Uh, let's see. LTAC 1 HKR in Trick. Yeah, but it's, uh, sorry, MTAC O right here. Oh, check this out. Let's actually see if I can do this right. Right here. Super famous system, MTAC O. Uh, that might have been a little bit. Yeah, currently MTAC O is the home system of NSH, where they have a Keepstar and a fraternity is also running a Freeport industrial complex there that anyone can use. And I believe it's just one uh, jump freighter jump from Jita. So uh, if you're if you're not in a big block alliance and you want to do industry, that might be a pretty good deal. I believe that was once the home of uh, Circle of Two as well. Yes, it was. So MTAC um, tech O oh, here. Boop. Yeah, that works. Yeah. I think I can pinch out. Oh, it doesn't work. Bummer. All right. Wanted to check that out. Boy, Ron makes this thing look easy. We have to like switch back and forth and you have to pick up three or four things. We're going to get better at that, actually. Oh, absolutely. Takes time. Yeah. So my, my stream did look at the cost of building faction ships. Right now, if you were to get a Cinnable blueprint, buy the materials, and try and build a Cinnable, it's about 900000000 million-esque. Whoa. Uh, I don't believe That's that the good. prices are going to stay like that. What do you think they're going to do? Uh, I think that the, the cost will come down. Uh, we're still, uh, I, I would imagine people are still trying to figure out production lines and get their uh, stuff in order. Uh, and as more people start realizing, oh, this material is excessive in value, though like a lot of it makes a misc, and uh, people will start flooding the market with stuff as they're incentivized to make this stuff. So I'm sure it'll equalize after a while. Uh, it just that just will take a minute to happen. The market will happen. Uh, let's actually take a look at the market uh, since we have it here. And we're looking yeah, at... Yeah, no one's going to pay $900 million for a Cinnable while you no, bring that up. No, no. That's just crazy, right? Nobody will. Uh, and they're currently on the market for $150 million right now. Uh, I was looking at that, and it's like, dude, there, there's no way that that's sustainable at all. Um, yeah, I'm checking my calculator right now, and it's telling me that the, if you build from the raw components, it's $189 million for a materials cost. So it might have already... that jump. Oh, it oh, might have I'll, already I'll, dropped too. I'll show you. Well, any, that's probably not counting the BP, uh, the blueprint, right, Gregorian? Oh, you're right. Oh, blueprint, something shouldn't be that much, right? People are Blueprint's people. Not... Are, people are not being uh, shy about bumping up the blueprint costs for these things. I want to uh, point out, as long as I'm uh, doing this, that there are some things to learn about how to look at this industry chart in case you don't know. Most of you will know, but uh, one of the coolest things they did that is CCP a while ago was to uh, allow us to zero in on types. So here I'm looking at the rattlesnake and I want to see other faction battleships. So instead of looking at them one by one by looking in a search 
uh, I can actually just hit this little thing here and that will zero me in on everything that's like that. So now I have all the faction battleships here, as you can see. Put that um, back up. And that allows me to tap through them quickly so I can kind of compare like how these things are to one another. This is very important for certain things, but not all things. Okay, so I do have it up, the, uh, the Cinnable and the cost of production. Oh, okay. Let me uh, go back to you one second. Okay, so um, I don't have a Cinnable Blueprint handy right now to show you guys, but uh, the gist of it is these new materials here are really expensive right now. So uh, in order to build this ship, you would have to buy these materials. So if I got, got a Cinnable Blueprint, put it into my industry tab here, I would have to buy these to build it. And uh, the estimated cost to buy in this buy order is as it fills its going up. Uh, the big things in this list are the new materials. Uh, we're looking at, I can't remember what, what the big, big cost was. I believe it was the, uh, these preservation things, uh, 797 million esque for them. Yeah, but that was a little, you have to read the numbers. It's a, little, it's a little blurry. You'll have to read the numbers. Uh, yeah. Was it this one or was it the other one that looked like Dogecoin or a graph of Dogecoin? <laughs> <laughs> that's a cryptocurrency that's exploding in value right now. Yeah. Well, one of them had a, one of the new materials had a graph. It, it was a, uh, it's a flat line like this and then went straight up. Um, but the material cost, again, as people are incentivized to make these materials, it will, uh, people will start making them and the market will get uh, saturated. Uh, I can almost guarantee that uh, because that's how supply and demand works. And it's just going to take a minute for people to do that. In the wild. But yeah, I, I really doubt that they're going to stay at uh, 900 million is to build a Cinnable or any faction cruiser for that matter. What you're yeah, talking... if, they, if they stayed at that high, I don't think anyone would fly them. I'm sorry, I just realized... Well, I might. <laughs> you're talking about... Yeah, you might. You have... Uh... Uh, great what do they used to call it in the old days you have great prospects you're a big you're a great money maker um the it just occurred to me that you're talking about a cruiser which shouldn't be anywhere near 900 million i mean that should be they should settle at or around three or four hundred million esque yeah and that's battleship prices that's t1 battleship prices which is still really high for what which were faction, is... faction cruisers at before what 200, 150 mil? 120, 130. 120, 130, yeah. Yeah. I'll let you in on another secret. I actually bought up, because I didn't have that much liquid isk anymore, I bought a bunch of jump freighters. And then I remember those were like not going anywhere. So I thought, and then I thought, well, I can't buy a bunch of faction battleships. I, I did before, but I can't this time. And so I put all the rest of my liquid into faction cruisers. So I should probably be selling those things right now. I'm just going to mention you, you asked me and I told you Barkas and Barkas flew up. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but right. So you think these things are going to come back down to a reason they're in orbit right now. Yeah. So like when, when, when there's a choke point in production, people will start doing it. Uh, one really good example is the trig loot about three months ago uh, before I started doing the uh, Triglavian content it was up in value and I was like, Ooh, this is valuable. I need to find a way to make it because there's profit in it. And I found a way to make it and the value started going back down and then they got to a reasonable price. And then now there's new materials. The trig ships are now uh, expensive to produce again. Uh, but over the last three months they went down and then they came back up with this past pass, but they were trending back down. I think Nurgles were up to 330 million is a piece. Uh, and we brought them down, or up, they were coming up to like 400 million escapees, and we brought them down to 300 million escapees before uh, the patch hit. 
We're looking at the Orthrus now and that thing, you're right. It looks like uh, cryptocurrency. It's just explosive. Let's have a look at these other ones here. Uh, I don't know anybody likes this Shamu, but even that went up. Cinnable, this is what I bought a bunch of. There's just always demand for a good Cinnable, uh, Cinnable fleet. You see, I'd uh, imagine alliances are redoing their doctrines right now because certain ship classes are just insanely expensive. Well, well with what's happened in Delve, the uh, Blood Raider ships will probably start going back up in price because they were always kind of the cheapest. Uh, Normally, just because, uh, you know, there's so much farming in Dell. There's the Phantasm that also kind of went up a lot less aggressive than the other one. Stratios, another one that people, uh, I think I put a lot into that one because that's also a ship has a lot of historical demand. So the Stratios can actually be made outright in the SOE LP store. Hmm. Can't all these? No. Well, not in the SEO, Sisters of Eve, but... Yeah, so kind of like a, you buy a Raven Navy with a little bit of ISK and straight LP. The conversion rate's really bad, so we'd have to get into a pretty serious situation where the prices are insane for it to be worth doing, but they can be made, the Sisters of Eve ships can be made from direct conversion. Yeah, I bought a bunch of helots too, uh, because, again, historical use, lots of purposes, and those have uh, skyrocketed as well. So... Uh, again, that's not bragging because I, I always lose as much money as I get. But This uh, is an opportunity, guys. But it was it was definitely uh, something that we called, and that's why I bring it up. It's actually problem vigilant. Yeah, so I think the big winners here were the Arthras, which you called, and uh, the uh, Gila. My God, Gila's. Wow. Good stuff. Well, the Orthrus yeah. and the Bargus have always been kind of the highest uh, faction ships, right? As far as price go. Yeah, you can't get their blueprints through just regular Nullsec ratting, so, which is one of the main sources of uh, blueprints for the other factions. I believe they come from Mordus LP. I, I think I was corrected a couple weeks ago on that, but... Uh... They're, they either just drop from us. I'll, I'll have to double check that. I believe they come from the LP from doing level fives, but the Mordus level fives are difficult to do or they don't exist. I can't remember which it is, but they, yeah. of the faction ships, the, um, uh, what are they? I can't remember what race they are, but the Barkas or the just Legion. Garmer. Yeah, the Mordus Legion ones are the hardest to acquire and build. Yeah, Mordus Legion LP comes from one constellation in pure blind which is the home constellation of banderlogs alliance and the other source for their blueprints is the low sec uh mortars legion rats that you can sometimes find which are harder than normal ratting anomalies to deal with and then we also have to couple on the fact that the garmer is one of the most lucrative ships to own in the game and is very good at pvp and the Orthrus is insanely good at PvP as well. They're incredibly scary in uh, small gang and solo applications. And then the uh, Barkas is one another incredibly lucrative ship to use for level five mission running. And again, is it terrifying in PvP? These are bombers, aren't they? Uh, they I mean, they are. They're missile, missile ships with yeah. bonuses to range and scram. Uh, they are, and uh, they're tied as. Uh, the second fastest with a, f uh, a couple other ships in, in their class uh, comparatively to their friends. Uh, so the only ship that outspeeds them uh, per class is angel ships. So uh, a Cinnable is the only thing that can out outspeed an Orthrus, and a Macario is the only battleship that can outspeed a uh, uh, Barkas. They're, they're incredibly fast, so they're and they, do a, they punch hard. They're fast and missile boats. And missiles yeah, got and they look... Not long ago. And they look good, right? Yep. They they also have that scram range bonus, which is amazing. The scram and disrupt range. So they can have a defensive scram. And then a, a Macario can't. So like a Macario won't be able to catch a Barkas, so the Barkas has a scram on it. Tell me what a defensive scram is. So there's, there's a window uh, between uh, 
where you can scram and your opponent can scram. If you're in a bar or, or say you're in an Orthrus, uh, your, your scram range is like 18 kilometers and the standard scram range is like uh, 12 kilometers. I think with overheated, you can get with a, a fact, get around there. Anyways, your, your max scram range is much higher. So when they have to use the micro warp drive to catch you, yes, they're faster than you, but when they're in that window, if you scram them in that window, they fall back behind you and they can't actually get the scram on you to shut off your prop mod. It's referred to as scram kiting and they're excellent at it. Interesting. So again, the scram is normally used to not let somebody get away, but you also shut down a micro warp drive, right? Yep. And the only way to catch yep. them is to use a micro warp drive. Right. Uh, so if you have an afterburner, this doesn't apply, but you're not going to catch somebody in an afterburner. You're not catching, uh, one of these with an afterburner. Yeah. I don't ship. Yeah, no. I'm going to just take a chance here and see if I can draw what you just said. So here's one guy I'll just do down here. And there's another guy here. And this guy is like, oops, I'm taking off. So I'm going that way. And this guy says, I'm going to use my electronic warfare to slow him down. I'm going to shut off his propulsion bonus. And this guy uh, says, you know what? I'm going to do the same to you. And I can hit further than you can. Uh, therefore, get rid of this guy now. This guy, let's uh, say he's here. The range has run out for the other guy, but this guy's got better range. And so this initial guy cannot catch his prey because he's slowed down too. And uh, I think that's how that works. Yeah, it's it, it's referred to as scram kiting. Um, and a lot of ships do it. It just, the, the, the Mordu ships are exceptional at it. It's the bonus they get. Yeah, it's range. it's fifty percent uh, trained up five. They get ten percent per level. So if the base range is ten kilometers, they get fifteen kilometers. Plus, you're probably going to have like a faction scram, which is yeah, you, you yeah, get more like twenty eighteen to twenty kilometers. Yeah, per you, scram. and then you put metaplasmas on, and it gets even crazier. Uh, you can do a faction point too, and point them out seventy kilometers. Most things aren't catching you. <laughs> so no. yeah. All right. Thanks for yeah, that explanation. The, I'm sorry I destroyed your explanation with the drawing. Uh, the stick figure drawing is new to me. The software is new to me. And uh, my desk, I'm, I'm actually drawing at full extension way over here. So uh, it's uh, not anything that I'm comfortable on this first show, like changing colors and uh, changing pen sizes and stuff. But there you go. So I, I I am derailing stuff. I'm sorry. No, it's good information. <laughs> you know, though, let's get that to the fine. let's get to the main subject of uh, what we wanted to talk about. Let me actually switch back to the guys. Are we done the news? I think we're I done think with we news. Had, anything uh, else? I think we had a battle in UTAC Q. We did. That happened. Uh, it was, I believe, Russian groups. So there was Red Alliance, um, Siberian squads, and uh, Drakaris. Uh, Drakaris is Chinese, but it was them and various uh, Russian Imperium-aligned groups against... Versus, uh Siege Green, Test, and Beyond the Breach. Uh, UTAC-Q what? UTAC-Q VWC. VWD. D. D, sorry. D. I have it wrong in my notes. All right. It's... Uh... It's another famous system. Let's go look at it. It's way deep in catch. I guess that's Whoa. part of uh, Legacy's uh, repacification of the region. It would seem so. Well, you guys they said... All, they, yeah. Both fleets had... They, they all brought Scimitar, Cerebrus, uh, Munins... Basically, a lot of the ships they've been fighting with in Delve, and uh, let's see, the the Russian groups lost eight billion. Uh, Siege Green and Tess lost about three. Yeah, the Siege Green is I I interesting to see since they're usually a low sec group. 
Yeah, I was uh, thrown off by that as well, seeing Siege Green and helping test. Uh, but the cat just kind of uh, on the outskirts of Dolsec and is, is definitely accessible through Losec, right? Yeah, I'm kind of wondering who, what sort of allies Siege Green has right now since last time I had checked, uh, they were allied more with Fraternity than any other Nullsec alliance, but recently Fraternity has been showing up on the side of Snuffed Out, which is hostile to Siege Green. That would be interesting to check out. All right. So there's the, uh, the system. Okay. Uh, have you guys noticed that um, Army of Mango has made some uh, yeah they've been since they expect to be living in esoteria and i believe faith abolis after the war with uh legacy and legacy allies like M army of mango are consolidating westward to around a delve instead of around esoteria uh they they've uh captured a few more systems that were uh, uh taken by the imperium when sm some of the smaller imperium alliances that are not goon swarm deployed for forward to legacy sp old space and captured a few systems and destroyed a few structures so now army of mangoes has retaken a few of those for what they now plan to be living in Yeah, there's going to be a lot of open space there uh, where AOM's kind of moving out, like you said, to the uh, to the west and uh, to the east there with uh, the Russian groups, XIX and Razor. So it'll be interesting to see who fills that void. Yeah, they're all like trying to find, uh, fill out like new spheres of influence. So it is going to be interesting. I know Dread Bomb has a lot uh, right in that area, but I'm not I'm not sure how much they're gonna actually hold when people start uh pressuring it. Dread Bomb and Wrecking Crew continue to grow as a, a null sec block, right? They keep playing in, in null sec further. I think yes. somewhere they're like the sixth largest now if you kinda rank the null sec blocks. Uh despite you know, some people claiming, well, we're just a low sec organization who plays in high in, in null sec, but you know, the, Are you talking about a certain other talk show host? Oh no, I wouldn't bring that up anywhere. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't take a cheap shot like that at all. We, we, sorry, we tripped in Probably and and got uh, got some solve, and we just just hanging well, out. Yeah, right? it sounds like a snowball effect. We're just gonna kind of keep rolling. Just, uh, just hanging. There's another bit of information from uh, Bellamir here that I put this out. Let's go to Eve Online again. And uh, I'm going to take you to the store. So that's the menu and down here, New Eden store. And there's a skin for a hurricane. So uh, I'm just going to go Is ahead this and... today's 18 plex skin? Yeah. yeah, I was going to bring that up uh, while you're bringing that page up. I'll just uh, throw out a couple other I items here that relate to kind of the game. So obviously the sales continuing, capsule mm -hmm. day stuff. Uh, if you are... Just coming back today and listening to this, the, there are eight rewards and there are only eight days left to get the rewards. So log in now if you haven't done so in the last while and you're thinking of coming back, doing uh, Omega or whatever, do that quickly today. Get in, grab today's reward, and make sure you log in every day because there's only eight days left and there are eight rewards to get this uh, for this Capsular's Day. So make sure you do that. Yeah, this skin is yep. And on another Beautiful. note, that uh, Hurricane being a battle cruiser, not affected by the changes, uh, they could get uh, more popular. So you could start seeing Hurricanes a lot more in fleet fights. Oh. Nice. So yeah, this is a, a really good looking skin. I don't normally like them, but this purple one, I think I have a thing for purple. And I really like yeah. the, uh, the, the, the Blossom ones. I forget what they're called. See if they're actually on the market. I don't think they sell them anymore. In fact, I'm, I'm certain they don't. 
I'm not a fan of yeah. the Yeah, awesome. I, I I really like the heart surge skins though. Yeah, I thought I did too, and it turns out I was thinking of the blossoms. But you're right, the heart surge are much more popular. Let's get out of the store. Um, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the uh, putting skins in a vault too, kind of like Disney does with their movies or used to. <laughs> That's right. I remember the vaults. Uh, I think if I go ahead and jump into uh, the ship here, thirty thousand plex. My God, man, you're rich. What? Thirty <laughs> thousand? Yeah, I think that's what I yeah, have. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I feel poor. <laughs> uh, I wanted to look up what's the. Um, actually, a Nix I think has a. That's not a very neat one. I wonder if I could just do blossom. No. I know that the uh, Macario has it. Oh, these are holes and fits. And where's it? Here they are, skins. Shows you how often I... Uh... I can't just do general skins? There must be a way to do that. Oh, well, we'll do it next I, I, I think Macario has an example of both. Okay, so let me go back to Macario. Come on, Mac. Under battleships, under non-empire, under Macario. Let's simulate you. Nope. You Let's should be able to find it through the drop down menu. Info. Yeah, there you go. Um, Hit the little eye. Picture. <laughs> this is like <laughs> six things deep. Here. Eros, that's it. This does look like a, like a skin disease more than anything else. But uh, I don't know. I have a soft spot for it. Uh, and you like Heart Surge, which is this one, which is a lot tighter. And this glows like a metallic pink. My monitor uh, that you're seeing is really hot for some reason, so everything's blown out white. Uh, the amarathine mantle, mantle is also pretty cool. Oh, yeah, this uh, this looks fantastic. Something about purple and brown. I think it reminds me of like Mexican candy or something. I don't know. Looks pretty cool. All right, enough of that. We're indulging. <laughs> It's okay. So on their, um, you know, Eve note, they put it out on their, uh, the, the online news. Today is, uh, or last call for CSM 16 is coming up in a couple days. So if you've been hemming and hawing, you got two days to get that in. So. Uh, I believe you I, have to have your passport ready to go too, as well. You have to have all your documents. I think there's a list of documents, including your passport and few other things so there's the blog post uh i'm suspecting that if you haven't really figured out whether you're doing it here in the last couple of days you're probably not doing it but i think it's newsworthy in case anyone's been on the fence and you want to do it or you kind of forgot or maybe you just woke up after a 10-day nap or something <laughs> i was on the fence last year and i'm on the fence this year i think i'm stuck on the fence <laughs> well you only got two days to get off the fence or the fence is going to get off from underneath you so I don't know. That sounds really rude. I don't know how that worked. We All should right. move on. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about um, some fittings. Somebody asked us, uh, are, do you have any fitting recommendations for the events? And I turn it over to you. All righty. Uh, I made a little presentation here. Just give me a second to pull up the right client. I got seven open. Seven clients? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, um, this is my, I'm just going to rename it. This is my winter event Vega that I made for the winter event. I found it did the Grist to hunt event and it does this event as well. Uh, I'm finding that um, after playing with them for a day, I played in, in high sec and low sec, which is the safest and the most dangerous. So I played with both ends of the spectrum um, that they do about three to 500 DPS uh varying depending on how the room spawns uh you do get random spawns uh you get two to three waves in each room there's two rooms you definitely need a prop mod on your ship super important you need to be able to move because you the uh you land on the thing it's an acceleration gate you go on an acceleration gate you get the first room and then there's another acceleration gate about 40 kilometers away that you have to uh get or that you have to go through as well uh, so you have to be able to travel that 40 kilometers while you're killing the uh, first room group. I, uh, and then at the end, there's a can, can I, that you get. Can we get an export of can that? I suggest, yeah, can, I suggest, can I actually just suggest we just back up one step and explain what the event is, how you find it, where it is, before we talk about 
the ship you need to get there. Okay. I'll go back to this then. Sorry, um, sorry. Okay, so uh, there's combat sites. You find them all over space. Uh, they are randomly in space in random places. Uh, they exist everywhere. You can find them null sec, low sec, and high sec. Uh, you find them on your probe scanner. Uh, if you open up your probe scanner, uh, they'll show up. Uh, they also sometimes show up on your overview. If they are on your probe scanner and your overview, it means that somebody has warped to them, but they haven't been completed yet. So you can either go contest or complete the site. Uh, but if it is on your overview, but not your probe scanner, that site is complete, uh, and there's no reason to work there. Uh, and that's for the combat sites. Uh, there's also an exploration side. You have to scan them down and find them. Uh, the most lucrative ones being in low sec is the most lucrative place to do them. Uh, the mid uh, difficulty and mid reward is in null sec, and the low reward, low difficulty is in high sec. Uh, and you just kind of find them by exploring. You just go jump around through gates, and you'll find one eventually. Um yeah, so that's that's how you find them. It's, yeah, it's a pretty the, simple event for the the PVE side and the exploration side is really simple. And these are the EOM, I think, like a abandoned or something research combat or combat site or something. That's yep. the, something like that, right? And yeah, then the ones, the ones that you scan down are, uh, yeah, you, you have to scan them down. It's another EOM something. Uh, I'll find it. I'll find the name. They're capital assembly or capital something or another yards. Yeah, it's, it's obvious called. that's what they are because they're EOM whatever. The ones you have to scan down are the data. They start out as a data site on the on the exploration side, but the ones that you're talking about today, the combat sites, basically just automatically pull up in in your standard. Um, you don't need to you don't need to you know pop probes and find them. They're going to be there. So they're easy yep. to find. Just roam around and obvious what they are. EOM blah blah blah. Okay. Yeah, they 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 look like combat sites. They they function and act like combat sites. Uh, so uh, again, they do. Three to five hundred DPS. Uh, I I thought at first that they did thermal kinetic because they shoot blasters, but no, they do omni damage. Uh, for the most part, they do kinetic thermal, but there's the occasional NPC that does specifically explosive and specifically EM. And if you're not tanked for omni, uh, that makes things very difficult. So if you don't have an omni tank on your ship, you're going to suffer. Uh, so I recommend a all around tank for it. Uh, Again, the effective hit points per second that you need to tank is three to 500 DPS. Uh, again, depending on the size of your ship. So a smaller ship that has a smaller signature radius can get, get away with a little bit less, and the bigger ship needs the full tank. Uh, there's a little bit of E-War. Uh, you're going to get webbed. You're going to get um, uh, tracking disrupted. You're, you're going to have that. So if you're, uh, uh, you're running a battleship, you're going to need a grapple and a web to be able to apply your damage. Uh, if you're running a cruiser smaller, you can get away without uh, tracking enhancement, I guess, is the way to put it. They do a little bit of uh, NOS or newts, which hurt your cap. Uh, so you need a little bit of resilience towards that, but it's not an insane amount. It's not like the uh, like the winter event or the uh, Grissus Hunt event where they do 10 to 12 a second. Uh, each NPC that does it does like three or four a second, and they don't get a whole lot on you at once. I haven't had problems with it with plus five cap. Uh, I've would recommend you have at, at least enough to run your tank enough. I don't know if that's the right way to describe it, but it, I guess it is. Um, and then the last bit is you don't need a lot of DPS. It's mostly frigates and cruisers uh, with a boss battleship at the end. Uh, and the boss does quite a bit of damage, uh, but he does have a good bounty. After you kill the boss, there's an object that uh, is uh, invincible in the second room. And uh, if you kill, once you kill the boss, that object becomes not invincible. You kill that object and it drops the container. That's where the loot is. Uh, that's the reward you get. Uh, and that's for the um, for the uh, uh, combat sites. Uh, an example of a fitting would be my, my Vagabond here. I'll show this real quick. Uh, it's a really easy fitting. Uh, we have auto cannons in the highs, 425 tech twos, running mostly Republic Fleet EMP since their weakest resist is uh, EM resist. And then uh, we have a Republic Flute Large Cat Battery, a Multi-Spectrum Shield Hardener Tech 2, a Large Shield Booster Tech 2, a T2 Afterburner, a Reactor Control Unit Tech 2, uh, two Gyro Stabilizers and a Tracking Enhancer, an Assault Damage Control for Emergencies, a uh, Medium Projectile Collision Accelerator, and a Small Capacitor Control Circuit. Uh, this fit runs roughly 400 million ISK, and you can run all sites with it. Uh, but it does require T2. Uh, alternatively, you can run something like a Praxis or a Battleship, but that's up to you. 
Uh, I do have a fit up on my workbench for the Praxis. I don't have it handy that is labeled for the winter sites. All of my winter site fits will work with this event. Uh, they do work fairly well. Um, and then I do want to talk about the PvP arena. Uh, and normally I don't talk about PvP, but there's an interesting thing, and there's a reason my wallet's open underneath this. Uh, if you go to the PvP event site, it's, it's Cruiser 18-Way FFA. You will probably lose if you participate in this. That is a fact. You're probably not going to make it out. But here's the cool part. When you enter the arena... Uh, there's an event reward for 9 million S for entering the arena. So if you claim that event reward right when you enter, you will get 9 million S back of the 30 odd or 25 million S you spent on your cruiser. And then if you manage to accomplish a total of 5,000 damage, you will get another reward. As you can tell, this is what has happened. I didn't do it, but sometimes you can do both. Uh, you end up with 9 million plus 9 million, which is 18 million S. And then if you insured your cruiser, you're going to get another payment of about 15 million isk and you paid 5 million into that so that's uh you get 15 million isk you paid 5 million into this so that's a 10 million isk gain you get 9928 million isk if you can keep your ship below 20 million or 28 million isk you go in there for free and when you die you're profitable for going in and dying and having fun uh so you can participate in this event and earn your points going through the PVP room fairly cheap and having fun doing FFAs uh, the only problem with this is that there's been a lot of collusion with groups working together uh, to kind of uh, hedge the odds and 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 offset their cost. Oh. But um, oh. yeah, oh. never, never. never. Um, but it, it's something fun to do, and it costs you almost nothing to participate in. Going in, you fail to do the the five thousand damage you end up coming out with only a loss of like five or six million isk and you can roll it again and again and have fun all day. Uh, so the the PvP side of this event was done fantastically and I hope to see more things like this in the future with events. And I'm I after playing this for a day, I, I, I had a lot of fun with it and normally I don't do a lot of PvP. So uh, I feel like they did it right. You need a chart to get into this event, do you? Uh, you really? need a, uh, a filament, but they're like 40k isk per filament. They're super cheap. They were dropping in Abyss in very high numbers, so people running Abyss are feeding them into the market very rapidly. Yeah, that's my little presentation for the uh, event. Good. So, um, quick question for because I watched your uh, your um, kind of walkthrough of the hunt, and I thought you did really well on that, and uh, your ship fight, your ship fit, and all your uh, how to do it was was really well done. So I'm assuming you know you've already done your homework for this. That's good. But could you compare the hunt sites to this event sites? Are they which one's harder? Which one's a little easier? Like what should a player expect who did the hunt and wanted to start doing this? I would compare it to the winter sites, not the hunt sites. The hunt sites were frigate based. So they were were uh, they were balanced around using an assault frigate rather than a battle cruiser. There was another event I can't remember what it was that was based around battle cruisers and battleships, but I feel like that was the winter event. But I can it, it it's almost hand in hand difficulty wise with the winter event. Okay, but so complexity wise, I mean, because the 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 hunt was really like two rooms, right? You come in the first room, you get. Uh, you had a couple waves you had to deal with, and then the final room was just a single, uh, quite honestly, quite easy. I did a bunch of them in low sec in a bifrost. I got a pa I, I just kind of figured a method out. It was no no big deal. Should I expect the same thing, or is there a little more randomness in this one where I'm going to encounter some different uh, different drop types? Like, because I think they have mm -hmm. a wider set of chip ships to choose from this time, right? Uh, yeah, they, they, they've got a random set of ships. Each one does different war. They spawn randomly, uh, but you don't need the key. So the, there's no key require, requirement oh. in this one. With the Grista Hunt, you had to go find an egg. You had to kill that. You had to get the key, and then you could go and do one of the combat sites. No, you, 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 you don't need to bring anything with you except for your ship to kill it. Uh, so I would no. say it's a little bit simpler, and there's not as much to figure out. You just have to figure out how to find them. And then, Great. of course, Great. kill them. No. All right. I'm just checking out the market stuff. <laughs> yeah, we're watching. 
All right. Well, we also showed people that in the agency, uh, this is where you could get involved with the uh, 18th birthday festivities. I showed that earlier. And then just now we showed the Capsuleer Day and the uh, Cruiser Extravaganza. So you can get in on that action if you want. There is uh, one question from the audience about uh, for the events. How much tank do you think is recommended? Do you have uh, depending on your ability to signature tank, uh, a a uh, effective EHP of of about three to five hundred uh, per second uh, sustainable. Uh, because uh, when you have the full room spawn, they do a lot of damage, and then the battleship does quite a bit. I don't have an exact number, but the battleship does around 200, 250 DPS. And then uh, some of the heavier spawn rooms can do upwards towards 500. Uh, the good news on this one is, unlike previous events, uh, there's a destruction tower. And the only thing that disrupts is that tower, or on the only things that hold you on grid is that tower and the battleship boss at the end. One's web, one's disrupt. It doesn't scram, it disrupts. Hmm. All right, do we have All any other questions for Hateless Gaming? If so, write them up. Uh, I'm watching chat. <laughs> I am too. I'm going to shoot some lightning bolts to. Yeah. So here's people. here's another quick one. So if you're kind of fairly new to this and you're you know like a Praxis bro, uh, you know because you've got all the parts for a Praxis, could you take a Praxis through the to the event? Yes, a Praxis. Make way through? A Praxis can, uh, but most of your fitting is going to be around uh, around tank, uh, and then you need to bring that grapple and web to be able to apply your damage, uh, especially if you have lower skills. Uh, because with less skills, you don't have as much application. So that grapple and web is going to be incredibly important, and pretty much everything else is going to be tank. Uh, and if you're unsure, fit a, not not a brick, but a, a strong active tank uh, that you feel is overkill, and then uh, you can kind of start trimming tank for DPS as you uh, do things. So. Or bring a friend. Right? Yes. Yeah. Bringing a friend is a fantastic solution. If you get a couple friends together, yeah. uh, it just occurred to me. Yeah. The whole thing is solo. We've been talking solo this whole time. Right? Yeah. Wait, so wait. You can always bring a friend. Yeah. Or this a this is great. Eve. This is a solo game. Come on now, guys. Yeah. <laughs> bring a friend. Right? Yeah. Who has a friend? <laughs> bring in plus one friends. Yeah. So bring just, your friends will make things better. Yeah, the whole conversation you were talking with solo gameplay, solo tanking and stuff, but of course, you know. Bring yeah, a, a, a single friend in a Lodgy ship will keep you alive. No problem. Yeah. Hey, torps right. and shields. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bring N plus one friends until the site becomes trivial. All right. Uh, are we done on that section there? Rendell, you're all out of questions. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, just uh, trying to cover questions in the chat and a couple of the items in my head. So I think we're good. Awesome. Thanks. So uh, went over how people could get involved and you know what some of the best practices were. And uh, hopefully you guys get involved. Again, look at the agency window. There's a lot of stuff going on this week there. Okay. Uh, I think that's it for today. Do you guys have anything else you want to talk about? No. Uh, good job with the pen. Nice new format. <laughs> Yeah, we we'll have to figure out how to I change colors. But I wasn't even going to use it today. But I was like, "Oh, there it is. It's a tool. Use it." I was going to practice for a little bit. Uh, I, I do want to say that tomorrow on Tuesday we're going to be talking. I think it's offline, so we may repeat the show at this hour, at our normal hour. But it will be recorded earlier for Europeans. Um, and I don't know if it'll be live yet. Haven't decided that. We're going to be talking to CCP about the. Uh, well. I think, I think we're going to be talking about the quadrant uh, and uh, all the stuff that's uh, going on with that. And then next week, we'll probably be talking to CCP again, but that one will be on um, some things that uh, they want to talk about regarding new players and players coming to EVE and all that kind of stuff. But Wednesday, I'm going to be revisiting a highly successful format that we've done a few times before, but last and we did it. It was pretty fun for everybody involved. It was a three-hour show. We took uh, the meta show and the fireside chat, and we took uh, town halls, and we listened to them, and then we broke them down and analyzed them as we went. 
So we'll do that again this Wednesday because uh, the weekend the town halls uh, came out. Now, normally it's kind of rare that Horde does a town hall. It's every few months. It's not every week. But we're in a fast phase of the war. Now, they didn't do a town hall, but Tess did. I think they have a weekly address. So we'll look at Tess. We'll look at the fireside. We'll try to break those down. If there's anything interesting in there, we'll uncover it. Atlas, thanks again for showing us uh, what kind of ships to fly. Maddox, all right, thanks for coming. Uh, Rundle, you too. We're going. And uh, earlier, uh, Adrilind had to take off. Uh, thank him for coming too. He's again our editor for our newspaper that you can get uh, if you use. Well, let's do this, shall we? I'll show you how to do that real quick. You happen to be in the game and you go to your mail. Boy, all my laundry is coming out today. And uh, <laughs> thanks wanna... for having me today. This sure. Is fun. You go to sure. You go to the mailing list. And you type in TIS news. There it is. And you click on that and hit join, and it will send you a welcoming newspaper. But as you can see from the mailing list, um, this has been going on for a long time. This character, let's see. Yeah, I don't know. I think that I might have thrown out the other ones or this character wasn't signed on, but this has been going on for a long time now. So these newspapers are really cool you know, what went on today. So we do battle reports. We do all kinds of stuff in here. You know, how to get involved with stuff. Here's foundation information. So you'll want to get on this list. So again, go down to add mailing list and add TIS news and you will get on there for free. We don't even have any like uh, advertising or anything on there. So there it is. Okay, hateless, uh, say goodbye. Now we'll see you wave. Good to see you, buddy. Thanks. Th thanks for having me. I always enjoy being here. Yeah. Love to have you. All right, guys. Uh, thanks very much for coming. That is all we have time for today. We will see you tomorrow on Talking in Stations.